What's going on, Los Angeles? Welcome into another edition of the Rams Skinny here on the LA Football Network and live on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Very special guest with us. Um, hasn't been on this rendition. We've obviously done crossover pods before, but now that this is the new Ram Skinny podcast with myself and Skinny T, had to bring on the man, the myth, the legend, USC legend, but also a Seahawks legend as the Rams are playing that team. My guy, Lofa Tatupu. What's up, my brother? How we doing? Yeah, fight on. I appreciate the SC shout out. Uh, thanks for having me. I finally made it to the show. I'm honored, fellas. <laughs> We're only, what are we, Skinny T? We're only like, 12 episodes in so you're you're the first guest so oh, you should 12? be honored by that 12 good number Ooh. maybe it is 12 <laughs> it was meant to be it was meant to be absolutely uh let me ask you real quick before we get into this game uh big uh, must win for the rams who have been kind of in a tailspin seahawks obviously on the the other side of that but you know coming off uh some some tough games as of late but quickly we mentioned SC, and you are an SC legend. It's Victory Bell Week, UCLA, USC, big game on Saturday, 12.30 kickoff. Just want to get your thoughts real quick. I mean, what, what does this rivalry mean to you? Do you still love it? Are you still engaged with it? Or, is, you know, it's been many years now. Well, my only rival is the Cal Bears, because that's the only team I lost to in two years there. A uh, mm. guy by the name of Aaron Rodgers, who turned out to be pretty damn good. But, yeah. um, no, all jokes aside, uh, yeah, this is – rivalries is what make high school college you know even when you get to the nfl division rivalries much like the rams and the hawks are playing this week it's uh, you're familiar with the opponent and especially just the cross town man right like just right there in la i mean winner has bragging rights for a full year and and you don't forget that uh, i was lucky to beat them and i say lucky i mean that because uh they they gave us the fight of our life right before that national championship game against oklahoma they really, I mean, they they should have beat us. That that that's how close it was. Uh, I forget the final score, but it came down to an onside kick, and that's what happened. They had probably like I think they were six and six or six and five at the time, and we were undefeated. But anything can happen in rivalry games, and they found a way. They made a, a special teams touchdown. They they just they did whatever it took, you know, to to give us the game of our life. And I know that was like their national championship right there. So looking forward to it. We, uh, you know, we've had a, everyone thinks we've had a rough season because of expectations, but it's, um, you know, it, it's, it's been tough, but I've been, I've been proud of the way the guys have fought. Yeah. That's, that's been our, my big thing being there. I'm at every game at practices and it's like this, this team still fights, you know, it's obviously disappointing where they're at, but definitely haven't given up and, and anything like that. So we'll see how it goes on, on Saturday, but getting to this game and then I'll, I'll toss over to skinny after this, but I, on the start, I want to. We've talked about this before, Lofo. Uh, even last year, I just wanted to get your thoughts on on Geno Smith. I know that's probably. I'm sure you and Brett talk about it in your show, Take Twelve, Great Seahawks Podcast. If anyone's interested out there, um, but you know, is he still the guy? Is is he any of the reasons why some of the losses are? You know, just your thoughts on Geno. Of course, he's the guy, and you know, I think much like SC, the expectations. You know, um, like with Caleb coming off a of Heisman, and we were supposed to put it together. Well, this is, you know, the year that the Hawks are like, okay, we got the defense, we got the running game, and it's slowly coming together. I just uh, – it geno has been the topic of a lot of conversation, rightfully so. Um, new contract, comeback player of the year, Pro Bowl. He put it all together last year, and so they wanted to see another level of play out of him, and it just hasn't been there yet. Um, the last couple weeks – you know, I remind all the listeners up here when I'm on radio or doing the Take 12 podcast, we played the number one and two defenses in Cleveland and Baltimore. Those are very tough yeah. things to overcome. Um, and we haven't really gotten the run game going as we expected. And I think some of that's the combination of all the linemen that have been out. But um, I'm not – Gino, he, he did what he had to last week against the Commanders. Um, it was ugly. I mean, you look at the final stats, 369 and two touchdowns, no turnovers, which is the biggest key. Um, you know, I thought he played a great game, but he's still taking heat in the in the media. And so, um, you know, why is that? I think it's, you know, when you had Russell Wilson for 10 years, you know, I, I try to remind everybody, we also had a very good defense, you know, for all those years. <laughs> and so finding a way for it all to come together, it will. And if, if Geno's – just playing okay, which he is, and he'll say the same. Um, imagine what it looks like when it all comes together. 
And so that's what, you know, I'm trying to keep everybody in the optimistic mindset uh, going forward because it's just one week at a time. And uh, we got our hands full with, with the Rams this week, who very familiar with us. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, going into this game, the Seahawks are just one point favorites, despite the the, the disparity in the records, yeah. uh, you know, a six and three team playing a three and six team, um, you know, <clears throat> what's with that slander? Is it is it all Geno Smith based or is there uh, is there something else there that uh, we're not seeing? I, I think it's the division matchup. You know, these games tend to be a little closer. You guys came up here and beat us. And I mean, I think it was like 17 or 20 unanswered in the in the second half. Yeah, right. And uh, and I think the biggest thing is that that Stafford's back, you know, um, that he is the engine to that machine. And, you know, uh, the rapport he has with Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup, I, it's just I, I wish he could have waited one. Matt, wait one more week to come back, please. <laughs> and then you got you got McVay coming off of a bye week, so the guys a little more rested, healed, but they've had two weeks to prepare for this game. And McVay always he's a masterful game planner. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, masterful game planner. Sometimes the in-game stuff we talk about all the time is uh, a little shaky as of late, but obviously the guy knows what he's doing, and and um, you know one of the best to do it, I think. But talk to me about this uh, Seahawks. Uh, running game obviously that's been a bread and butter for this team for a long time Kenneth Murray you got a, another Bruin back there with Zach Charbonnet um, so just talk to you about the run game and kind of what you expect against this Rams defensive front yeah it's tough I and mean, you have to take care of Donald I mean that guy I don't care if you triple team him he's still going to find a way to impact the game um, you know last week I thought we would try more of some outside zone they had you know Allen and Payne two tough defenders to run against inside in the trenches uh, but Charbonnet found most of his success up the middle which was crazy it was wild to me and then Walker they, he's trying to hit it up in there but you know he's got a tremendous amount of speed both you know downhill and uh, laterally so uh, he bounced a couple things last week, and there's that's kind of where we've had issues of, you know, alignment engaged, and then he bounces around and it, it turns into a hold. And so that, now you're playing behind the sticks. We have to find some consistency there. The guy took a check down for 64 yards and clocked almost 21 miles an hour. So it's like just get him in space is really – and then so, um, like I said, when, when commanders shipped off young and sweat, I figured, okay, the edges all day. But – you know, we mixed up some run. Uh, we stuck with it, which was, you know, hasn't really been the case. Against the Browns, we were averaging 8 and 11, respectively, between Walker and Charbonnet. And I think they got a total of 11 carries. And, you know, it was like, just stick with it. You know, and it'll good things will happen. That's where the play action, which Gino's so good at, um, you know, the big shots downfield come from. So, um, you know, expecting to see anywhere from 15 to 20 carries out of uh out of walker alone and then charbonnet he, he's he's warranted more touches uh whether it's catches or or rushes uh so uh hopefully you know we get that ground game going if we're looking back at that first game one of the things that the rams were really able to do was stifle gino uh kept held him to uh, just 112 passing yards you know, looking at that game, what did you see from the Rams' defense that they were able to uh, kind of affect him so so much and, and limit him so uh, mightily? Yeah, they did a great job. And, I mean, you know, we, we did have a decent, you know, rushing attack against you guys the first time. We just didn't stick with it. Um, and, and then we got behind in the score. And uh, But, the you know, you guys, the secondary played really well. Um, I was uh, – yeast – I had never heard of this kid, but I would dare say that he has risen the level of play back there. Nice. Nice. <laughs> um, dude, he, he had big hits all over the field, uh, tight coverage, uh, you know, Witherspoon too. Like, you guys have talent back there. And and then we have to get rid of the ball um, or, you know, Donald is just going to make your day hell. And so um, – I just I, we have I haven't seen a total a ton of separation, you know, whether it's first you guys or when I was watching that Baltimore game, um, you know, the Gino three of the four sacks came on just four man, you know, rush. It wasn't even any pressure. And when they panned out and they showed the end zone cut, there was no cushion or separation between the receivers and the DVs. So guys are jumping routes. And um, and I think that's really what you guys did well, you know, on the, on the first time around. 
yeah, we'll see if they're able to to replicate that this week and who can game plan against that weather side. Um, when you look at the the Seahawks defense, we were joking before you jumped on here about pro football focus, and a lot of people take their their statistics as the Bible, which we do not here. But you know, they're they're a nice measuring stick for fun, and and they have the uh, the Seahawks defense power ranks tenth, which you know I think is is fairly fair. What's just your thoughts? You know, being being an all-pro linebacker, being a defensive guy. Obviously, we've seen this unit in the past, the Legion of Boom. We've seen, you know, Ken Norton do stuff with his defense, and now obviously a different-looking unit. So just your thoughts on this defense, how it's progressed kind of throughout the season. No, they look great. They really do. Um, Well-balanced. Um, it, it's hard to say, you know, what the true strength is because right before the deadline, we, we you know, we kind of solidified that D-line with Leonard Williams uh, from the Giants. And he got his first sack last week. Also, another sack came off of one of the tackle end stunts he ran with Boye Mafe. Watch out for Boye Mafe. Mm -hmm. Seven consecutive games with a sack. He is now the outright leader for the Seahawks with that record. Um, and he looks to add to it. And the craziest thing is uh, there's three games where he could have had two more sacks in each of those games. So he, he could be sitting around, you know, nine to ten sacks right now. Um and, and he'll, he's only going to get better. That's crazy the jump he made from year one to year two. But so they got the D-line. They got two of the best linebackers, in my opinion, Bobby Wagner, Jordan Brooks. Um, so, and, you know, both those guys can rush. We got Adams back for this matchup that we didn't have the first. Same with um, Spoon. You know, he is, as advertised, fellas, he was the number five overall pick for a reason. Um, we yeah. just even did a comparison because I said, everybody's like, oh, I can't find a comparison for him. And I was like, I can. I know a guy that was probably about 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, Spoon's about 6. He's listed at 6. Uh, but, but so was I. And I'm like 5'11". <laughs> but, but Spoon's 180. This other guy's 180. And he put a stat in every column almost every week. His name is Hall of Famer Rondé Barber. And mm -hmm. the ability to play out on the island, but then also jump inside and play nickel, which I don't think he's gotten a ton of work on. Um, he had two sacks that, that game against the Giants where he had a 97 yard interception for a touchdown and two sacks. It was unbelievable and uh, forced a great fumble last week uh, on, a, on a run by the quarterback. The guy's just hungry and instinctually he's one of the, the best football players I've seen in, in quite some time. Well, you talk about Boye Mafe. Uh, do you have any insights into, you know, what, what it takes to make that leap from year one to year two? What what uh, what do you see in his game this year that's uh, that, that's improved? I think it's just having a, a rush attack, a plan, you know? Um, in college, when I watched his film in Minnesota, I, he was just bull rushing, and no one could stop it. And, you know, it's tough in the league, you know, especially if a guy knows, okay, that's his, his go-to move. They're just going to sit and wait on you. Uh, he does have the speed to turn the corner, and it looks like he is getting lower on that on that rush. And and hand his hand fighting has been amazing. Um, just not allowing the the tackles or, or the guards to get a hold of him. Um, but you know, big kid, six four, two sixty, and his get off is incredible. And so once you put that all together, because with with him, you know, you really only need two moves. You know, the bull rush and then a counter off of it. And I think he's found that 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 perfect balance uh, or chemistry between those two those two moves, and uh, he's finding a number of ways to beat you. But uh, he really only needs two moves. Yeah, it's uh, it, on the Rams' offensive line. Will have their hands full. Who's been? They've been kind of up and down this year. They've been better than expected. That's kind of our our theme here at the Rams. Skinny is better than expected based on what the year was, and the offensive line has been that. And. Uh, he reminds me, we always bring this back to SC, why not? But uh, not in necessarily play style, but in just my thought process. Uh, Tui Tui Pelotu last year, who was so good at SC. And that was like my one, I wasn't concerned because I knew he was going to be really good, but that was the one kind of jump I thought it was he needed. Is he was just so instinctual at SC and just, he was just quick, but he didn't have like crazy pass rush moves. So I was yeah. curious to see how he would put it all together in the NFL. And clearly he has, and he's been absolutely dynamic with the Chargers. So I think uh, you guys over there at Seattle did a really good job of then, like you said, getting those two pass rush moves and instinctually using them at the proper times. Yeah, and totally, man, he's great at running stunts. You know, there, yep. there's really there's a, a science to it, and you know, and how you set guys up, and and then you know, um, with who's he's got Mac and Bosa. Those are some pretty good guys to learn from that helps. over there, right? And they're doing a great job. 
he looks like he came back in, in better shape than when he was at SC. He's like, he's cut up now and yeah. he's really using his athleticism uh, to his advantage because he has some tremendous power too and some pop behind those pads. So um, yeah, I, I could see him doing big things over there. And um, I know, I know they're having fun, you know, having him. Yeah. Yeah. He lost a bunch of weight before the combine to kind of give, give some speed on. So um, I'm sure that helped. I'm bum Lofa. We don't really get to talk about the, the DK Metcalf Jalen Ramsey matchup since Jalen has now been shipped to Miami, but uh, let's get a, uh, okay, let's do this. We do this on your show all the time. Whenever you have me, it's what, what do you guys call it? The zone in performance or key player. Is that what you call it? Uh, we, we usually, we, we, we've, we've done, we've done a lot of things these days on the take <laughs> podcast. Like now, now we're, we're doing, um, we do movie quotes for giveaways. We do, <laughs> Yeah, we do a bunch of stuff because because Brett and Katie are actors, of course, you know. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah, if there's a player to, you know, pick that, that could really change the game, is, is that what you, you want to you look at? Yeah. So let's zone in, yeah. zone in CBD by Lofa Tatupu. Uh, zone in on a key player. We'll each go. So, Ryan, have one ready for the Rams. Uh, just a key player for the Seahawks to win uh, who you're zoning in on. Mine's Kenneth Walker. Um, you know, there's, there's like, I, I forget the stat, but when he gets over 15 carries, I think it hasn't even been close. You know, like we've, we've, I don't know if we're undefeated or, but it's, it's a signature stat, you know, obviously turnovers are always huge, um, for, for, you know, keys to victory, but, um, just him getting the touches because one play can change, you know, the whole course of the game and, and create momentum for us. But so, so Kenneth Walker he has to get 15 plus touches in order for us to be successful on offense. So that's who I'm going to zone in on. Love it. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's me and Ryan talk about it all the time. It's wild how in the NFL, just every team abandons the run. It's not just the Seahawks, the Rams do it all. It's like crazy. And it's like, these guys need touches. Look at Kenneth Walker at Michigan state. He averaged what, like 87 carries a game or something. <laughs> and, and no one values running backs these days, right? It's, it's wild. Yeah, so he definitely, if he gets that, that's going to be a handful for the Rams. Kenny T, who you who you zoning in on on this matchup? Man, I'm going to go back to week one. The guy that really stood out, splashed onto the national scene, Puka Nakua. Uh, we need to have a big game from him, I think, uh, for this Rams to, team to keep uh, keep pace with uh, Seattle uh, this week. And, um, you, know, he, you know, this offense overall has been down the last uh, few weeks, and he hasn't had a big game. Recently, we've we've kind of hashed it out a little bit, trying to figure out how to use two fantastic receivers, get Tutu Atwell worked in there. Um, but, uh, you know, he just he put up 118 yards that, that first game and uh, love to would love to see something like that. And uh, the, the Rams offense has just not been producing uh, the way I thought it should all season. But just in the last in that in our in the losing streak of the last uh, few weeks here. They just haven't been able to put anything together, even when Stafford's been on. Um, so McVay's got to figure out how to get him uh, get him the rock more often. Yeah, got to happen. A star was born in Seattle. Is it still Lumen Field? Is that what it is called still? Yeah. Yeah, well, star was born at Lumen Field, and we need to see that again. Um, I'll go with a lesser known name, but I'm going to go with Kobe Turner and to the turn of kind of how you talked about Lofa, the key of Seattle running the football and, you know, they, the Rams need someone on the defensive front besides Aaron Donald to be able to plug holes and slow guys down. And uh, as you mentioned, if they were able to run between the tackles against Washington when they got two big bodies there, the Rams are going to need to be effective in that. And I think Kobe Turner has been a guy that's been uh, – we talk about him a bunch. He's, he's played really well for being kind of a mid-round pick uh, and a rookie. And this whole defense is so young, so a lot of guys have had to step up. But I think if he can kind of play that role and, and be that run stopper next to Aaron Donald, that'll be, I think, a big help. Who who is playing tailback for you guys? Speaking of running backs, because <laughs> I, I, for the last like four weeks, I it's been like a different guy every time. Royce Royce Freeman, and Freeman. then the is Zach Evans been in there? No, I think it's been mainly him and uh, and um, the uh, Henderson. There we go. Yeah, oh yeah, Hendo. yeah. I picked up Henderson. Yeah, and oh. off the couch. So, uh, what's his name? Um, Kyron Williams should. Kyron this Williams. is his last week on IR, right? Skinny. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So he'll be back. For this one. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, they, they need him desperately. They've definitely, the offense has dropped off with him being out. So that'll be a huge, and Ronnie Rivers, their backup was out. So uh, oh, yeah. they got, 
they got Royce off waivers and they got uh, Henderson off the couch. So that's been the running game for the last, you know, three games or two games. Um, I like Henderson. You know, I haven't seen Freeman play in a little bit, but Henderson, he's a tough, he's a tough running back. Yeah, he's run well. I, it's funny that, and I think Royce Freeman has run well too. And I, I don't know if you ever noticed this, but when whenever a running back like fumbles once, which obviously you, you want them to do this to carry the ball, but it's like now Royce only runs with two hands on the ball, which is good. He's not fumbling, but he's so like immobile between tackles. Cause he just, yeah. you know, you can't get the body. So all it's right. like, all right, don't want him to fumble, but it's all of a sudden he's like lost a part of his game. Cause he doesn't have any mobility. Yeah. No stiff arms coming through the hole. <laughs> no, <laughs> none. So, all right, well, let's wrap up with uh score predictions. Why not? Right. So skinny, I'll start with you who you got in this one. I'm going to I'm going to go with my hometown hometown team the Rams. Uh, I think they're going to sneak it out again. Uh, sneak out a victory, get their uh, ship righted. It's going to be a close game, low scoring game I think as well. I'm going to go with a uh, 24-23 Rams victory. 1 Ooh. point win. It's like a nail biter. Yeah. yeah. Lofa, who you got? I not surprisingly have the Seahawks winning this one. We got to we have to split if we want any hope at, you know, winning this division or competing for it. And, uh, you know, I know a big game for both teams, divisional matchup, but um, we'll find a way to make it happen this time around. And uh, I got 27-20 Hawks. Nice. There you go. Um, for me, it should be always a great game between these two teams. Always love seeing Pete Carroll back in Los Angeles. So that'll be fun having him down here. I, I If this was a normal week, I would probably lean the Seahawks. I just think they're they're better at more positions. Um, but coming off a bye, getting guys healthy, as you mentioned, Matthew Stafford, and just being a must win if this team wants any shot at still mathematically a shot at the playoffs. So I think that McVay will see throw the kitchen sink at play calling, hopefully. I mean, we talk all the time, Skinny, about like, let's get some creativity back in the offense. So hopefully we'll see some of that. Um, so I'll go, I'll go a close one as well. Let's go 27 to 24. Rams win. Uh, by three. So, well, there you go. Should be a great game, though. Should be a lot of fun. Always a great NFC West matchup. Lofa, my man, thank you so much for for jumping on with us. Lofa does the Take 12 podcast over there up in Seattle. Uh, legend in Seattle and also a legend down here in LA. So thanks, man. Anything else you want to plug or uh, where people can find you? Uh, no, I'm around. I'm on social media, on X on or Twitter, whatever it used to it is called these days. Uh, Instagram, it's just my name. Uh, Daru, do you have Christmas decorations up already? Hell yeah. Christmas starts November 1st in the Daru household. Wow. Day after Halloween. Yeah, look at that. You should see Have my it. living room. It's like Father Christmas came. Haven't even had Turkey Day yet. Unbelievable. I, I, I see them. I view them as like blended holidays for me. <laughs> Makes no sense, but I see it. Um, speaking of holidays, before we sign off, happy belated birthday. Saw you had a another trip around the sun a few days ago. Right. So happy belated. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Grateful for another year here. Uh, yeah, man. 41, 41 years young. Right. Young 41. Probably could still play four, four downs. I bet in the NFL, if you wanted to. Uh, if they were on the goal line. Yeah. But I, I don't know if I could run with these guys these, these <laughs> days. Well, there you go. Well, did you do anything fun or just hang out with the family? Yeah, just just kicked it. Went to Top Golf um, with the kids. It, it was yeah, it was a good day. Um, did did a lot of podcasting. Got to talk football, which I love doing. So uh, blessed, man. Very grateful. Love it. Well, we're blessed to have you here. So thanks for taking the time. Appreciate it. Lof to Tupu, Skinny T. I'm Ryan Dyer. This is the Rams Skinny. Everyone enjoy the game this weekend. We'll talk to you all for the recap right after. Uh-huh.